There has been a lot of um, developments in the past uh, year within the field of clonal hematopoiesis. Um, but one of the things that has emerged most recently, actually within the past few months, um, has been a series of papers linking clonal hematopoiesis to uh, infectious disease. And so that was the focus of my uh, overview. It was including, there's um, data from both my group and then from um, others that I'll mention uh, briefly now. So during the COVID pandemic, um, there was this realization that COVID was a, uh, COVID severity was predicted in at least in part by levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And that got um, us and many others thinking that there could be a possible link between clonal hematopoiesis and, uh, and, and COVID-19. Um, this is because we know that some of the ill effects of clonal hematopoiesis seem to be linked to a clonal hematopoiesis inducing a pro-inflammatory state. And so one of the efforts around trying to understand how clonal hematopoiesis might be linked to COVID-19 um, involved uh, work by me, um, Pradeep Nataranjan, uh, Philip Adewala, um, within the COVID-19 host genomics consortia. We developed a collaborative project across multiple groups um, looking at how clonal hematopoiesis might predict risk of severe COVID-19. And uh, part of that was you, was uh, trying to pool data from studies that had uh, panel testing for clonal hematopoiesis or whole genome sequencing. Um, basically, using that methodology, you can detect uh, clonal hematopoiesis driven by point mutations or small insertions uh, and deletions. And then in parallel was an effort led by Pradeep Nataranjan's group pooling uh, data from studies that had uh, genotyped their participants using a SNP array. Um, and using SNP array data, you can detect large scale uh, copy number events that drive clonal hematopoiesis, which is another well-established mechanism that results in clonal hematopoiesis. So uh, just for, for our for our group, um, we combine data from the impact cohort um, and from the uh, from a consortia within South Korea and found that clonal hematopoiesis uh, was moderately associated with risk of of COVID-19 severity. Um, this association seemed to be present regardless of um, how COVID-19 severity was defined, either by hypoxia or requiring um, invasive ventilation. And interestingly, we saw that, um, that the association was present, um, not only when you define CH, um, by putative driver mutations that we know, uh, drive myeloid disease, and we know have the potential to be, um, the cause of this clonal expansion, but we also saw this when you defined CH um, as, as a mutation that was not a known driver event. So, so this made us think that it could be that um, clonal expansion rather than specific mutations might be important in explaining this association. And then we went on, um, because we saw this association with COVID-19 severity in CH, we wanted to see if this could be a broader phenomena. So we looked at how clonal hematopoiesis might uh, be predict risk of, of, a, of a diverse number of infections. And we did this by, um, by looking at billing codes um, within in solid tumor patients see, that were sequenced on the MSK impact cohort. And interestingly, we saw that um, there did seem to be a, a risk of specific types of infections, um, sepsis due to streptococcal infections or enterococcal infections, and uh, risk of, of uh, C. diff. Uh, and then, so taking a step back, um, in parallel um, to, to our work, going back to Pradeep Nataranjan's work, he also showed that um, 
when, when you define CH by a mutation um, due to a copy number event um, within the UK biobank and the, um, uh, the mass general biobank, um, they saw that CH was associated with a risk of COVID-19 severity using that definition of what as well. And interestingly, um, with a similar effect size. And again, um, within their group, they looked at this more broadly about how um, clonal hematopoiesis might be related to uh, broader types of infections and saw similarly to our data that CH seemed to predict risk of sepsis, um, other types of respiratory infections and uh, digestive tract infections among others. So taking this data together, um, it seems like there is an association between colon hematopoiesis and risk of infections, um, but the mechanism is still uh, very much unclear. It could be that there is some causal relationship between CH and risk and infection risk, um, be, perhaps driven by uh, CH altering the um, immune function um, and, and, and local inflammatory environment. But another explanation um, would be, as we know, that clonal hematopoiesis is influenced by a variety of um, environmental factors, and you know, so, which we tried to account for in this analysis, but some of which we you know, may not really even know about at this point. Um, so it could be that clonal hematopoiesis really is a biomarker of something else that could be driving this. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this develops in the years to come. One other uh, piece of information that has been um, increasingly clear is that from, uh, from mouse models, clonal hematopoiesis seems to um, not only result in a pro-inflammatory state, but also seems to be promoted by an inflammatory state. And so uh, the way that you might think of this for, from, from epidemiologic human data is that um, you know, our results showing that CH might impart a risk of infection. Um, this may also translate to infection imparting a risk of uh, increased clonal hematopoiesis. And supporting that this might translate into human data was a recent report um, published in Nature Medicine that I reviewed in the talk that describes uh, that a cohort of individuals with HIV and age match controls um, where they performed deep, deep sequencing, looking for the frequency of clonal hematopoiesis, um, comparing individuals with HIV to age match controls. And they showed a fairly striking enrichment of clonal hematopoiesis in elderly individuals with HIV. We also have some um, unpublished data um, in this that I also describe and present in the presentation um, linking uh, clonal hematopoiesis to risk of cardiovascular disease within individuals with HIV. So, and the reason why this is interesting is because we know that uh, individuals with HIV have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And it will be interesting to see how much of this might be in, in part actually attributable um, to the increased frequency of clonal hematopoiesis within individuals that have HIV. So in summary, I hope uh, I've presented a nice overview of some interesting new work linking clonal hematopoiesis to infections. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more on this uh, to come in the next year. Um, and it'll be exciting to see how this translates into our understanding of infection risk and uh, inflammatory regulation. So thank you.